It is now day 17 since I started making this guy and that is all I have done. Going into the second week, I decided to give myself just 30 hours to finish this project. So in the last 20 hours of the second week so far, I have done the torso, the neck, the face and his whole right arm as well, as well as the left arm. So I now have 10 hours left to do the rest. <laughs> If you've been around my channel for a while, you'll know that finishing what I start isn't a strength of mine. And this is because when I get an idea for, for making a character out of paper, it's because that character usually just has a few key aspects I really want to bring to life and focus on. And usually I've done that, I've achieved what I wanted, I've brought those few key aspects to life long before the mo model is ever finished. So I stop. However, fast forward to now and I have completed Kenshiro and I am very, very proud of it. He turned out great. I love this model. I think he just looks so cool and he's very accurate to a lot of the drawings and the reference drawings I had of the actual character from various colored versions of the manga. One of my favorite parts of this model and the part I am most impressed with is the coloring. The coloring just turned out really great. The choice of blues I went with for his leather jacket and his pants I think just turned out really great. And then using a white Prismacolor pencil to highlight areas where the light was hitting just really added to that look. I really do love it. I also decided to go with the single shoulder pad here because on one hand the, the shoulder pad does look really cool and I really like it but on the other hand he sort of just has this ripped scruffed up look for the edge of his coat here with of course his big arms popping out and I like that look as well so why not have both and then his hair turned out really excellent as well and every time his hair sort of changed direction I had a seam change I just had a separate piece of card that I attached to so you can see starting with the back there's this big piece here covering the back of his head that wraps around and then I just did the detail at the bottom of it where his little strands of hair sort of flick out making this this kind of mullet thing he has then for the top, I had a second piece, and then above that I had a third piece, and then above that I had a fourth piece. And then for his fringe, I actually added these two extra parts here above his sideburns that sort of flare out. And then I had two extra pieces of card up here for the, the top of his fringe with his hair sort of flowing back. And I also just drew a few extra parts of the hair hanging down over his forehead to create that look he always has. But probably the coolest feature of him is that his jacket is removable. The point of this model and the main reason I wanted to make him was because I wanted to create a anatomically accurate muscular human physique. And so his jacket is removable. This belt at the bottom slides off and then it just unfolds like this. Of course you have to remove the arms first. And then it just splits open from either side, so it sort of wedges around either side of him. And the belt is what holds it tight around his, his waist. And so you can see the jacket is really just this one piece of paper. And to get the creases in the clothing, this is also what I did for his jeans, is I'm li literally just folding the paper. I'm drawing a line, colouring in a light area where the light is hitting, and then a darker area where the, where the shadow is. And then I'm just trying as best I can to fold the paper along that line, so the light area is 
pushing forward while the shadow area is pushing back. And the combination of actually folding and creasing the paper for the creases in his clothes, while also coloring it and drawing it with different shades of blue and gray to give that three-dimensional look, really just make everything about him pop. But moving on to his actual physique, you can see that the muscle on him is... I think it's really well sculpted. I uh, spent a lot of time thinking about how to accurately portray human muscle and how to shape paper so it bends the way real human muscle does. And I think a lot of the methods used for his muscles will really lay, lay the groundwork moving forward for all my other models to come. And I think this is best illustrated by a comparison between this Kenshiro and the one I made two years ago. And you can see some definite improvements here, notably in the muscles of the back, like the trapezius, teres major, and infraspinatus. The deltoids are a lot better as well. And of course, the colouring and inking is far cleaner on the newer model as well. Really just a better choice of blues too. Speaking of other models, here he is compared to a bunch of my other works. He is in 1 to 8 scale like everything else, which puts this 6 foot 1 man at 23.2 centimetres. Well, he's a tad taller because of his puffy hair. For articulation, Kenshiro has what I would consider the standard Paper Patriot movements, like a double jointed neck that can look down this far, twist at the top of the neck, and also look up, barely, because of his mullet. The shoulders are of course just tubes of paper rotating inside the body, so they can move 360 degrees while being able to bend out. However, you can see, because of how I tried to make the muscles accurate to real humans, there's a lot of overlay here with the traps and then the muscles of the back and the shoulders which kind of sit deeper in the body. This can be a problem, so you actually have to slide the arm out a little bit so when it's rotating, the, the front of the deltoids here can actually clear the trapezius muscle. And the arm can also bend out about this far until it hits the lateral deltoid. And if you watch my recent arm muscle tutorial, you'll know that I make the upper arm independently from the deltoids and the forearm. So it's a separate piece that slides over this tube of paper here. This allows for more variety in the poses and, and also allows for the upper arm to swivel inward independently from the, from the shoulder and the forearm as I mentioned and then out the way of the forearm's ridge muscles when the forearm is bending up making for a far more convincing elbow bend and giving this kind of overlay with the muscles that looks a little more natural too. I am particularly fond of this detail. And because all the individual parts of the body are just separate tubes of paper, they are all removable. They can literally just slide right out. And so this allows the elbow to actually slide down out of the upper arm and bend even further up before being impeded by the bicep. Another cool little detail I'm very proud of. And the wrist can twist all the way around while being able to bend a little bit. It could bend more, but the palm of the hand gets in the way. However, the cool thing about it being paper is if I really wanted to, I could just cut more of the paper out to allow for that extra movement if I desired it. His waist is just a standard T-joint, so it can bend this far forward and this far back before it hits the inside of his body. And again, the lever of that waist joint is just a tube of paper, so it slides into another tube of paper for the waist, meaning it can just rotate endlessly. The legs can both kick out about this far, and they are structured exactly like the arms, so all the joints work in the same way. And the hips can actually rotate 360, but usually they're gonna be hitting something, like his, like his little hip section here. And the hip section here is kind of floating around the main tube at the, at the center of the hips, but this doesn't really serve any kind of real purpose. The knee slides out just like the elbow, so when fully contracted, it does hide the knee joint, which is nice. And of course, it slides out to reveal the joint that can bend while also twisting. All the joints here are basically the same thing. They're just T-joints of different sizes and, and lengths. The ankle can also bend here, up and down, pivot side to side along this, this long peg going through the foot. I could go on forever talking about this model and how happy I am with the result, but that's it. That's enough for today. This has been my 3D paper model of Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star, made entirely from paper. So thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Uh, leave a comment below and tell me what you think. Bye.